the mayhem that is going to ensue. Yeah, you kind of got to buckle up. In this episode, all of the characters encounter their own therapeutic process at Lottie's compound. Misty goes into an isolation tank and has this vision. The dream sequence, Misty's dance sequence with Caligula, her bird. It was just so many ideas and joy and kind of excitement around getting to bring this moment to life. It started to make us laugh. It started to feel so bizarre. That it was one of those moments when you look at each other and you're like, you know, this might just work. I remember saying, well, so the dream would be John Cameron Mitchell, but like, who do you think we could get? And he's like, well, we can ask John Cameron Mitchell. Yeah. And I was like, no <laughs> way. <laughs> Talk to me, Misty, what's going on? Everyone involved in the creation of the costumes, the creations of the production design, they just brought this dance sequence to life. We actually built a fan into the inside. To keep an actor cool, we built it on top of a helmet, and then it's 3D printed and covered in fur, and of course, rhinestones. This is very un-yellow jackets to be in uh, top hat and tails. I am not a dancer, but I have done some choreography in the past, but I would never define myself as a dancer. It'll be all right. <laughs> What's so exciting is bringing the characters into the movement. So you want to still represent who Walter is or Misty is through the way that they're moving and using their bodies, not just their words. I really think it's one of the episodes across the landscape of season two that most speaks to what makes Yellow Jackets distinct. It's at once funny, scary, emotional. It's about the present and the past and how the two things are constantly colliding. The older women are drinking, they're opening up, they're talking about what they remember from the wilderness, what they don't remember, and what they've repressed. How much do you guys remember? As they do that, and you think, oh, okay, this is going to be one of the lighter episodes, we intercut something that happened in the wilderness, which is absolutely traumatic. I get to beat up Lottie, and I'm very excited for that. Hello. Hello. Are you ready to beat me up? I am so ready to beat you up. I love her, and I'm, I think it's going to be very fun. And she ends up, like, bruised everywhere, and I, like, go off on her. She wrote me, too. She was like, you get to beat me up. And I was like, I know. And we were both like, yes. <laughs> I took boxing lessons to make sure I mess her up properly. <laughs> My neck might be in a brace tomorrow. We can finally see a different side of Shauna and that she just really goes mental. Shauna needs to take out her rage on someone and Lottie, in a sort of messiah-like way, decides to submit to that rage. And as you intercut, it winds up overtaking you and it's very difficult to watch, I think, that sequence without being moved by it. The song Lightning Crashes that we do over the intercut winds up to be kind of the perfect compliment. The lyrics, I can feel it coming back again, right? It's it gives me chills to say it out loud. We are witnessing something you would not even imagine seeing on TV, let alone at the hands of these teen girls. What the fuck? Ashley and Bart said to me when we were pitching Yellow Jackets, we want to fundamentally subvert what a show about women can be and fundamentally subvert what a show about teenagers can be. And I can tell you in this episode, they've done it. <laughs> <laughs>